my fellow Americans, uh, this is former President uh, Barack Hussein Obama, and you're listening to the Mad Titan Podcast. Uh, please be sure to support this young brother from Chicago, uh, Jay Washington, because he's a funny bastard. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. I ignored my destiny once. I cannot do that again. Even for you. I'm the only one who knows that. At least I'm the only one with the will to act on it. The Mad Titan Podcast with your host, Jay Washington. To uh, the Mount Titan yeah. podcast with me, your resident super villain, Mr. Jay Washington. Uh, I am doing this live from my hometown, from Chicago, yeah. at C2E2, at the Chuck Loader Comics Podcast Central Booth. Shouts out to everybody here checking out the podcast live. Thank you, everybody standing around, everybody that's been walking up to me at the con. For those who are new to the podcast, let me let you know what this is. This is Barbershop Talk for Nerds. So, which means if you get in your feelings about a lot of things, you listen to the wrong <laughs> shit right now, okay? Uh, yes, those words are going to come out. Uh, I, I, I try to keep it A100 with everybody. I don't like to spare feelings. Now, people who know me know I got a lot of friends in the business, all that blase blase. But they respect me because I keep it real and 100, and I'm going to do it the same right here. Uh, so, thank you guys for having me. Also, as I'm recording this, happy Extra Black History Month Day. Yes. Uh, it is 29 days of February this year. Look at God giving us another one every four years. Uh, and I felt like with it being only extra Black History Month day, I had to have a black person with me uh, <laughs> guesting on the show. Uh, I, so I met this brother at a couple cons, man, and we just we connected and we hit it off. And he's a super cool dude. He runs Movers and Shakers Unlimited from D.C. He's been here several years. Every year I've been here, he's been here. Y'all give it up, Mr. Brandon Troy in the building with me right now. What's going on, man? Good, man. man, don't be acting brand new and bougie on this. Hey, I swear to God, I'll let you have I swear to God, you sound Got your overcoat on, like you're cold or something, like your hey, nipples look hey, like baby hey, things. What's wrong with you? fresh, man. fresh. <laughs> you're in Chicago. You better loosen up, sir. I ain't know. We will let you have it. I'm you know what it is. You better loosen the hell up. Uh, I like to, it's, yo, have you seen some dope cosplay here? Yes. Yeah. Uh, just just a moment ago, there was a, a, a dude here that was uh, up at, he was uh, dressed up as a uh, dark side. I don't know if anyone saw no, that. No, I saw that. But, but dark side looked like it was just an angry Donkey Kong. And he I was about to say, exactly. in Akasha, there was an Akasha. I on the way up here, okay. literally moments ago, there was someone. Yo, I've seen Akasha. I've seen some dope cosplays. Like shout out to the people who spend like all their time doing their costume. Like I've seen cosplays. That look like Respect. I don't have a relationship cosplay. You know what I'm saying? Respect. Like you can't have a partner and put all that work into a costume. Y'all got like, it. Y'all like, got you know what I'm saying? Y'all got that. I respect <laughs> got and bless y'all services for everything you've done. Shouts out to everybody just standing around looking like, what the hell is going on? They they gave a loud black dude a microphone. Yeah, they did in the middle of C2E2. Let me tell you, God, it's going to be something real. Uh, but like I said, this is Barbershop Talk for Nerds, and I always kick news off with my Marvel news. Now, I don't know how many of y'all have heard this, but there's a big rumor going around that uh, Marvel's parent company, Disney, might buy DC. Yeah. I think that's the wildest thing to hear. Like, first of all, how greedy is the mouse, dog? Like, what more? Do Let me tell you something. This is like a dude that lives on a ranch that got eight wives, and he like, you know what? They don't treat me right. I need three more. Like Disney has everything. Everything. When the Disney, it was like the Fox acquisition was something, but it was just to me. Disney got the Simpsons, and I was like, you don't. You got Homer Simpson's dumbass. How much more do you need? And the fact that they're going to get this now. Here's the reason this may happen for those who haven't heard. AT and T, who is the parent company of Warner has kind of realized they feel as if DC Comics and DC as a whole is not profitable for them. Well, a lot of people will disagree, right. but when you look at the grand scheme of things, DC Universe is not a massive success like they wanted it to be. And they could very easily just say, hey, we'll just let y'all do this and we just collect a little money here on the side. So, I mean, they could kind of do what, could. What, what Sony does. And just well, see, Sony wild. is a whole different ball game because Sony... Sony with this whole pitches deal with the Marvel deal, they realized it was like, yo, 
we making money regardless. Exactly. But I also have always argued with that, like how Venom crossed a billion dollars, and I still think Venom is a horrible ass movie to this day. Uh, nobody can convince me different. I will stab you in the throat with a spoon. Uh, Venom only did a billion because people wanted to see if Tom Holland would show up. And if you and if people caught me on Collider Live, I dropped the gym that Tom Holland did film a scene for Venom. As and Peter Parker and they right and Disney and Sony and Disney pulled it. They nah, was like, nah, nope, nah. don't put him in this. Don't you do this, Jesus. <laughs> and so, but you and I were talking before we started recording, and you said you got some thoughts as to why this is not a good idea. Yeah, exactly. So the thing that I mean with with the 20th century thing that we have with the X-Men, I'm cool with that because I'm a little selfish. I want to have my X-Men in the MCU. I want to have my Fantastic Woo! Four in the MCU. But uh, there's still something to be said that I don't want everything homogenized to be. This ain't milk. I'm just what saying I don't want it to be everything to be. I don't want everything like. I don't want any everything to be Disney fied. It's such yeah, yeah. a term because I mean, if we if we decide to have it all under one umbrella like that, then we wouldn't have. We wouldn't have our Joaquin Phoenix Joker. We wouldn't have all these experimental First of all, things. Please, please don't get I'm me just started. Saying, like that, Ro Joaquin Phoenix is not the Joker. He is just a clown. But I'm saying that is whether, not whether the we Joker. Have, whether we I have Joker, so whether we have that, yeah. whether we have uh, uh, Wonder Woman. I mean, there are. Don't get me wrong. There, there have been plenty of misfires by by uh, Warner, Warner Brothers, Brothers when it comes to DC. Yeah. But we might still not have the gems that we would have now. But do you without. think you think that hypothetically, if Disney grabs and acquires DC as a whole, right? Do you think that they would not still allow DC to have the autonomy to create the projects they've been creating? Because why would you? It's starting to work. You know what I'm saying? Shazam worked. Yeah. Aquaman worked, despite that horrible Definitely. ass Pitbull song Definitely. that popped up out of nowhere. Definitely. Like why? <laughs> <laughs> Who thought that was a good thing? Like, if, if you saw Aquaman, you heard Pitbull's version of Toto by Africa, and you was like, what? What type of cocaine was allowed to be had to have this happen? You had that. Uh, Birds of Prey. I like Birds of Prey. Uh, you guys. I do. Because I know what it is. Harley Quinn is an unreliable narrator. Like, people like, why is the movie all over the place? It's Harley Quinn telling it. And she's bad. She's crazy. Like, what did you think? Right. So, I believe that we still have... It's we'd have some creative control in that regard. They're not gonna try to make a giant, they're gonna make a DCEU, but it's not gonna automatically inter interject with the MCU. Like, with the Fox properties that they had, of course, they gotta get touched by Marvel. You want that to be done right. right. Bro, the last X-Men movie should have never been allowed to happen. <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence only had one coat of blue paint. Do you understand how petty you gotta be as a superstar when you just like, do this and I'm done? But Put these you, little dots on, you that's have it? To, you have to agree. Like, there's something to be said about competition. Like, it, you know, competition yeah. breeds. Mm. It breeds, you know, a good product. Yeah, but if, has, if there is no competition, but then let's be honest. Let's be honest. Has DC really and honestly been competition for Marvel? Mm, that, in I the mean, grand, in the grand scheme, because like I know there's a lot of DC fans who listen to this and who may be standing around and be sure. like, "It's a Marvel game." No, nah, it ain't that. It's just being realistic from the business. DC is not really competition for them. Remember, DC trying to play catch up to Marvel. Yeah, but again, at the same time, like I don't, I, 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 this going against my feeling. Yes. I, I rather did I just say in the beginning, don't I, be all in your feelings. Hey, did I say this like don't be feelings. in your feelings? I'm in my feelings, and we talked about this too, even when we were talking about yeah. with gaming, with football, mm -hmm. with our football games, and the whole Madden thing. Yeah, where you know, I remember a couple of years ago, Madden used to be like that, and now you could arguably say they kind of going by, you know, they going by the numbers, and they don't really challenge themselves because there really isn't anything out there to kind of challenge them to, to do better. Fair, fair. And I don't want that to happen to my superhero film. I feel like you just start crying if they announced that Marvel has bought DC Comics. I feel like Bruh. you just break down in tears Bruh. like a Tyler Perry movie. Bruh. 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 <laughs> Disney can't have everything. They so, can't. let's move on. Marvel everything. Studios now you know that they're about to start production of all their Marvel, their, Mar their Disney Plus shows. Excuse me. Sure. We know the Falcon and Winter Soldier is about to start shooting. Uh, Moon Knight is about to start shooting, and we still don't know who's no playing Moon Knight. Miss <laughs> Marvel, who? Uh, Miss <laughs> Marvel's about to start shooting. We don't know who she is, but also they're about to start casting for She-Hulk. Yes. So Marvel Studios put out a casting thing. I don't know if y'all heard this. They said they were looking for an Allison Brie type to play She-Hulk. And everybody was like, uh, just get Allison Brie. What is wrong with you? 
so Allison Brie was on the James Corden show, and, and they asked Courtney. He asked her about it. She was like, "Interesting." That's all she said. Now, I think that's kind of lame to be like, "Yo, we looking for somebody that's like this chick, but ain't this chick she, like she got the features we want, but she ain't the person we want." You could have just gave her physical description and not said her name. You get what I'm saying? Like I've done auditions for different things where they say they want this type of person. Well, get his ass. You know what I'm saying? Don't get me because you don't want me. You know what I'm saying? You want another thick neck brother. You don't want me. <laughs> you want somebody else with similar shoulders. You don't want me. <laughs> Speaking of the Falcon and Winter Soldier, now they are currently undergoing reshoots. Now, reshoots happen for everything. If you don't know in movies and TV, they reshoot everything. But here's why this was going through reshoots. Uh, the coronavirus. Mm. Now, first of all, I'm going to tell you something. Damn virus is a cold. Before everybody starts flipping out, it's a hyper cold. Everybody keep acting like you go just fall over and die like it's the T virus. No, it's a cold. You start sniffling and sneezing. Build up your damn immune system. Take some emergency. Put an IV of some orange juice in your damn veins. What is wrong with you people? Anyway, don't get it. In the brain. But the reason they did it is because of an angle they were going to run in the show. So they were going to do an angle with the pandemic. It was going to be this big global pandemic that was supposed to happen. And it was from the Mad Bomb type of uh, the line. That theory, you know what I'm saying? That's here. That issue, excuse me. And they were like, yo, with people dying, and this will be the same thing. We kind of don't want to do the exact same thing. So, Sebastian, we need you to cut your hair and get it, put this gray ass arm on real fast. Like, so I, I understand it, though. What you think about that? Uh, I mean, I've I've followed you know a little bit of the sh uh, show and the things that have been going on. I've heard about that, and I've heard about I don't know if you heard the other news about uh, and and it's taken with a grain of salt of them trying to add uh, introduce elements of what they have with uh, mutants. Now that they're trying to slowly seed in mutants within the MCU. Yeah. Um, do you know where I'm getting at yeah, with the uh, show? Which one? Um, with Omega. In uh, where? In Captain Marvel 2? Something like that? Well, no. No, no. So, the and again, take it with a grain of salt, but they were saying, I mean, I, I heard with Captain Marvel, that's a whole separate deal. That's a, that's, that's so a whole separate The only deal. thing that I know for certain that is like almost 100% happening is they're using Miss Marvel to reboot the Inhumans. Yes. That's for sure. And if everybody's seen the ABC one, you like, oh, please God. <laughs> so, but no, that's happening. But nonetheless, I mean... I understand and I respect them, you know, redoing the filming because they want to be, you know, considerate to what's going on. Yeah. But the whole mutant thing, I'm like, I'll wait till I see it because I don't think you just want to jump. Like, there was talk of bringing Rogue in somewhere, and I'm like, I don't know if they want to Marvel too. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you want to jump sense. that. No, not really, because I I think people just been watching X Men on Disney Plus and want to go ahead and do that. That's I literally what but, I believe. I mean, it's a seamless. It's, it's a way to not only introduce the X-Men, it allows you to approach it from a different angle and it has that element that you do have from the comics yeah. of that that connection between Rogue and uh, yeah, I, get, I get that but I think you're jumping the gun because you haven't even introduced the mutants and you want to go and jump someone, go jump in someone as Rogue which leads there's such a vast backstory yeah, There is but let's, let's be real they, they, they done Rogue wrong in those X-Men films those yeah. X-Men films did everybody wrong. What are you talking not about? Like we're not gonna wrong. act like not we're not, everybody the wrong. best X-Men film is X2. Everything got the now X2 first class, first class and Days of Future Past. Everything else was terrible. So, Everything else. X-Men Origins same. Wolverine. That's why Ryan Reynolds they, shot they his own slept, character in the head. <laughs> they slept on so many characters between Rogue, between Jubilee. But I mean, you also have right, to remember right. too, Fox did Fox wasn't allowed to use certain storylines and elements because they didn't want to give back Disney Marvel the properties. But, so, you know, you held to a restriction there. Uh, Spider-Man 3, the, the sequel to Spider-Man Homecoming and Far From Home, it's got a working title right now. So director John Watts is calling it Serenity Now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, out of all the things you want to call Spider-Man 3, like, with Tom Holland, Serenity Now seems ETM, to be... Doing too much. I mean, doing way doing too much. much. Like, I, I guess it's a good thing, man. I, 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 ah, it's like, <laughs> all right, I guess... I mean, but I thought it was going to follow along the lines of what we've been getting. Been getting. Spider-Man Homecoming. Right. Spider-Man Far From Home. You know, Spider-Man Home Under Repass or something. <laughs> home Under Siege. I don't know. Like, let it go under those like Because, like, I feel like you should follow this pattern. I feel like you should follow this pattern and do that. So, that's, you know what I'm saying? That's what's going on with that. So, that's all the Marvel news I got for right now. Unless something pop up in front of me on my computer, which it should. You're just saying it should need to be Spider-Man last hope. You want to say bring in Craven right now? I want to. So well, my thing about Craven is, I would rather see Craven introduced in Black Panther two. 
Okay. Have him as a native as a native member of Africa. Oh, okay. And his whole goal is always to hunt the most the biggest prey. Okay. He hunts lions and lions and rhinos, lions. Who the, who the hell is Ryan getting hunted? Well, there's a movie. Uh <laughs> called the hunt. <laughs> Shout out Universal. But have him want to hunt the biggest game he could ever hunt, the Black Panther. Okay. But, I mean, there's also something to be said based off of how they left off the, the second Spider-Man film. Not only could you introduce that Craven element, yeah. because now that everything... Sorry, spoilers, but at this point, y'all should have seen it. Yeah, if you ain't seen Spider-Man Far From Home right about now, that's on you. But, but I'm just saying. That's spoilers, your life that's in shambles. But that is, this, this ain't spoilers. This is just <laughs> it what's happening in the movie, okay? Based on where they left them off at the end, like, you, one could say, not only could you, they, there's room to, which, which would give it too much, but there's room to bring an angle with Daredevil if they wanted to. Uh, there's room yes. to bring an angle with, with Craven now that his identity is out there. So now, now, he's being hunted, now he's being hunted. So, I mean, I'm just saying, there's so many you I mean, know, I ways for them to go. I've said this numerous times. I believe Sony is doing the smart thing now that they've never been able to do before and that's finally give us the Sinister Six movie okay. without telling us it's happening because before they were like yo you gonna get a Sinister Six movie <laughs> I remember you finna get that, this that right? Garfield age right Garfield you finna get this. you gonna yeah, like yeah, Dane yeah, DeHaan yeah, yeah. little ugly self as a green guy <laughs> you gonna like that okay you gonna live with Jamie Foxx getting a gap out of nowhere which nobody has ever explained to that okay and if you ever watch The Amazing Spider-Man 2 when Jamie Foxx is maxed he has regular buck ass straight teeth right but as soon as he gets electrocuted by all them eels and becomes electro, he get a three foot gap and his three foot gap clears up, excuse me. He has the buck teeth before and then the gap. When did electricity <laughs> fix your teeth? Like his mouth, his tooth, one tooth was here. The next tooth was like, what's up fam? And they was chilling on each other side of the country, right? They was chilling. There was a little dangly thing in between. And then his teeth was just like, we gonna live here and would have Jerry Curl. And so then he falls in a vat of some electric eels, and his team was like, oh, no, I need you. You need it's me. Good. Let's come together. Let's come together like the John Legend song. And then, like, <laughs> nobody ever explained that to me. Nobody ever explained that to me. Uh, let's go over to some DC news. There's more casting been added to the Batman. Now, I'm going to ask the crowd that's here live at C2E2 in Chicago, have you seen the Batman suit? Yeah. Round, make some noise if y'all like it. Well, damn, okay. All right, uh, make some noise y'all like it. Uh, can you go to the next question, please? Uh, I won't ask the next question. I just want to say, uh, I kind of dug it because I get where they go. Every Batman is different. Listen, uh, Batman be begins neck dip move, okay? It was a thick-ass cow. He just was like this, turning his whole body. But now it's a different thing, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm cool with it. But they just added actor Gil Perez Abraham from Orange is the New Black and Pose in an undisclosed role. Like, there's a lot of people being added to this movie, and I, I think people forget what this is. This movie is going to have Arkham Asylum, right? right? There's going to be a lot of these stars in Arkham. Like, you ain't going to see. The only person really walking around as a villain is going to be Paul Dano as the Riddler. He's going to be the main dude. Colin Farrell as Oswald Cobblepot, he might walk around for a moment or two, but he going to Arkham. Everybody that was like, yo, this person's going to be here, this person's going to be there. You see them for two and a half minutes, okay? They're going to make sure you see Zoe Kravitz, though. You know why? Because it's Zoe Kravitz. <laughs> Who ain't trying to see Zoe Kravitz in love? Let me tell you something. I've dreamt about Zoe Kravitz in love before they announced this cat woman. So when it was, it was a dream come true. I was like, thank you, Pleasant Jesus. You listen to my prayers. All right. So it's not. <laughs> thank you, Leather Jesus. Um, so what is what is your thoughts on the Batman as far as these casting announcements, the photos we've seen, Robert Pattinson as a character? What do you feel about it? Well, here's the thing. Just dropping the name Robert Pattinson, like, initially I was relatively skeptical based on history, but, but you just I have... Did, no, but, your history went to but, one thing. No, I don't want my Batman no, in a twinkle in the shadow. But, 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 you know, since that time, I have been following him, you know, in terms of like other, what films? He's done, yeah. and other films that he's done. And he's, you know, shown range. So, you know, I'd be interested to see what he brings to, you know, Batman and Bruce Wayne, you know, just having an open mind and seeing what he does with it. A lot of people still argue that Ben Affleck should have stayed playing Batman. And my argument to that is, if the man's an alcoholic, let that man get treatment. I don't need to see Batman on a bender. You know what I'm saying? You flying around on a grappling hook with a pint in your hand. That just don't look right for the cape you're saying. All of a sudden, everybody look at the Batman like, bro, why is your eyes bloodshot? It's been a long night in Gotham. Let me tell you something. I had to find some criminals. They were at the liquor store. And I walked in and the dude by the counter. He was like, he was like, Batman? I was like, shut up, I'll be with you in a minute. He's like, I'm safe, so he's like, Well I got you Kentucky right now. I was like, Don't say it out loud. So 
I went to the dudes in the back, and they sitting there like, just shut the fuck. Wonder Woman like, somebody get him a breath mint. Like, I, so that's what we would have got if Ben Affleck would have stayed Batman, you know what I'm saying? Like, everybody keeps trying but I was, to. I was going to say, sorry, uh, one thing that I will say that I, I, I kind of see where they're going with it, even though I do enjoy Ben, ben Affleck's Batman, is, let's be honest, like, in Batman versus Superman, he was probably the only element of that film that, that worked and was the best part. I know, probably but, it was. but but I'm saying in Justice League though But like, until he got to the part of what Martha, what is that thing? <laughs> but I was gonna say in Justice League I still League, wanna shoot somebody in the kneecap and write that in the script. I feel a little different in terms <laughs> so of funny. how they approach that character because Can we not bring up that movie because people keep <laughs> let, oh by the way, let's say something about that movie real quick. Hold on, hold on, say your thoughts on that. Hold on, hold on. So for Justice League, I'm saying like versus what they did with Batman, like in, in BBS, he was like a badass. In Justice League, he, he just seemed like the, the way that they they treated his character, it seemed like he wasn't able to keep up with everybody. He else. was drunk. That's why. I'm just, outside, I'm saying. And no, I'm he saying was drunk. Was on set. You ain't saying. Like, but I'm look, saying. Look at Alfred, this. Just, but I'm saying, even the scene, I even the scene time. that they had with, between him and uh, and Wonder Woman. Yeah. Like I'm like, dang. Like he, in terms of of uh, um, that interaction that yeah, they yeah. had when when she. Was you know uh, attending to him? I was like, dang, like you, you, y'all, y'all so, make him seem so like a chump out here. here like, here's here's where I make the entire comic book convention mad, ladies and gentlemen. Here's what part with Jay Washington doesn't listen. give a shit. And if you want to argue with me, my Twitter is Mr. J. Washington. Stay <laughs> away. Guess what? But I give you these block fingers like the kid made me I don't care. <laughs> Justice League was the very bad movie, no matter what. And I'm tired of people to this day, to this day, you know, so like Deontay Walter before he got knocked out. To this day, still going, release the Snyder Cut. Let me tell you something about this bullshit, okay? I don't want to see an unfinished movie. That we know we're never going to get. It is over, this Justice League came out like three years ago almost. Let it go like it's frozen, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) Let it go. Like for real. There's something, there's a reason. I understand Warner, the studio does certain things and cuts it down, and I get it. I also believe Zack Snyder needs to shut the whole fuck up. Like, stop going on Vero like, here's the steel that you should have seen. I got a picture of Dork Sun. Shut the hell up. Get off of Twitter. Get off Vero. I just, there's certain things. People have moved on. We have a whole new director with a whole new Batman going in a whole new direction. Right. We don't even know if we got Superman anymore. You know what I'm saying? If you Thanks. show me, the only Thanks. way I would want to see a Snyder cut if that cut has the whole thing with Henry Henry Cavill's mustache. I just want to <laughs> see that terrible ass mustache that they decided to digitally erase on his face to make him look like the worst pedophile in history. Because when I looked at you, ain't look at Henry Cavill's face was like <laughs> Superman touches kids. You ain't look at Henry Cavill's face was like he licks hamsters. <laughs> it looked wrong in Justice League, you know what I'm saying? It was no reason you sit there to have a multi-million dollar company try to edit out a mustache on the man's face, and the man's face looked like worse than it ever looked before. Put the bang on his head, just let him be Clark Kent running around with a suit with the mustache. We would think Clark Kent wears leather and assless chaps, and we'd have been okay with it. Wow, you thought about this a lot. You're damn right. <laughs> damn right I did. Oh, I, but, I think we should move on. Speaking of which, the suicide... <laughs> The Suicide Squad, the sequel to Suicide Squad, uh, James Gunn posted up on Instagram that they have finished principal photography. For those who don't know what that means, they're done shooting the basic parts of the movie, right? So it might be a nine-hour cut. (laughs) Please, God, don't be a nine-hour cut. About a four-hour cut, three and a half hours. So they're done with that. And he talked to him talking about he was going through the worst time of his life. Emotionally, his dad had passed right before he started filming. His dog passed right when he was filming. And he was dealing with a lot. And so... Overall, what are your thoughts on the Suicide Squad? That didn't sound comforting at all, ladies and gentlemen. That was just a, a deep. I thought I was. Oh, you just you just released wind. You, you. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm I'm interested to see what uh, uh, what James Gunn can can bring to it. His, his flair for um, working with ensembles and. And taking material that you know may not, is not you know common uh, a common knowledge among uh, public because I mean very well you know look what he did with with Guardians of the Galaxy and mm-hmm. people I, I remember when that that film was first announced and people were saying it's a team with a talking uh, talking tree and a and a and talking a, raccoon talking raccoon shout like, out to Vin Diesel Vin Diesel went in and, uh, I don't know if you heard about day one of production when he went in the voiceover booth. 
Vin Diesel went in on stilts. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They were like, "Hey, bro, you are not really Groot. You are just the voice." Like, like Vin Diesel went and bought stilts. Method. First of all, where did you just decide to go? Like, there was a stilt shop, right? (laughs) And dude's been in the stilt business for seventeen years. It's been a family business, right? He's passed down stilts from one generation to the next, and he tells his family, "Today's gonna be the day we shut the doors forever. No one's buying stilts anymore. (laughs) It's no longer practical." And then Vin Diesel walks in and was like, I need eight pairs of stilts. Like, honey, we made it. <laughs> How much are you charging him? It's Vin Diesel charging whatever. He's not going to know. Like, I don't get that. But I think it's a – I love it. I love the idea of having James Gunn with this crew. I understand what David Ayer felt like with the first one, where, of course, we saw a lot of the studio influence. You saw Warner Brothers be like, no, nah, take this out, do this. And you saw Will Smith try his heart out to say this movie. If you look at the scene in Suicide Squad when Will Smith jumps on the police car, he's like, I'm going to make this movie good. I swear to God, I'm going to make it good. And you're like, Will, I understand, but it just ain't helping it. It's just not going to change. Margot Robbie didn't know what voice she wanted to keep. And then you made Killer Croc the blackest black Negro in history. Asked him what did he want when he saved the world. BT. Why? Why do you want BT? The worst he could have said, Tyler Perry movies. Like, he could have said anything worse. Just told him to get a Frederick Douglass book. Okay, BT. So you sit in the sewers and watch BT uncut? I wanted to slap every black person involved with the production of that movie for that. Who let that happen? Like, you know what I'm saying? What type of ba- backwards Negro to the white people close here? What type of backwards Negro let that happen? Like, that is horrible. <laughs> but anyway. Back to, <laughs> back to the <laughs> James Gunn Suicide With James Gunn Suicide Squad, you got Margot Robbie returning. You got yeah. Joel Kinnaman returning. You got Jai Courtney returning, who I want both of them, Jai, Co- Jai Courtney and Joel Kinnaman, be shot in the face in the first five minutes. <laughs> Shoot Joel Kinnaman in the face in Suicide Squad. You can kill Rick Flagg and no one will miss him. What? Is there anybody around here who says, listen, we'll be like, you would miss Rick Flagg in Suicide Squad. Joel Kinnaman's got the sexiest voice I've ever heard in my life. Ah, uh, there you go. Matter of fact, why don't you come get on this damn mic and say this? <laughs> I want you to say this. I want you to say it with the confidence you just said it out there. I said that Joel Kinnaman has the sexiest voice I've ever heard in my life. Tell me you watched Alter Carbon. I have. He just talks like this the entire time. He sounds like he's constipated the whole time. <laughs> he's taking the movies and it's never come out. You know, there are certain things Alexa that it just won't do. <laughs> Look, I ain't mad about it. Everything about Suicide Squad, the first one, needs to change. Right. I'm not, I'm not defending it by any stretch. I'm but defending Joel the, Kinnaman's his specific. Voice, his voice. So put his, his voice, voice on a tree. I don't care. Voice. Have his body in there. Take his voice out. Make him a character. Draw him as a cartoon. You, you don't need him in there. Hologram. I'm good with that. <laughs> we set? <laughs> uh, yeah, we set. Get away. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. It's Joel Kinnaman's voice. Joel Kinnaman's voice? What? I mean, but not. Oh, yeah. Viola Davis is back. She's back. Let me yes. tell you something. I, pers- I love Viola Davis as an actor. I love everything she does. But for me personally... You could have gave me Cynthia Adai Robinson from the Arrowverse when they had her as Amanda Waller, and I would have been game on because she was what we like to call a bad bitch, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> she was just devious. Like, Viola Davis' as Amanda Waller didn't seem as sinister as Cynthia Adai Robinson's did. Like, her Amanda Waller made you be like, uh, she's killed babies. Like, it made you look like she don't like humans. Like, she's just evil. You know what I'm saying? I got you. I got you. I got you. But you got her, and then you got the addition of Idris Elba, which they only did that for the ladies, because they're going to have Idris just with a with a black and gray goatee with no shirt on for no reason. Like, Idris, you got to save the world and put baby oil on? The hell is wrong with you? And they have some deep cuts in there. They have some deep cuts with some of those characters. They got that Rat team. Catcher in there. Right. You know what I'm saying? Polka Dot Man. <laughs> Polka Dot Like, man. until for me personally, this is going to be the realest thing, and everybody who knows me personally knows I'm a comic book nerd. No, I do this. I've been doing this from here. Collider Heroes, Collider Movie Talk, everywhere. You bring in Condiment King, damn it, I'm happy. Give me the man with the ketchup and the mustard. Just, what'd you say? Hell yeah. Oh, by the way, if you've never watched the DC Universe's Harley Quinn animated series, get your like life that. together. Like Let me tell you something. That. Kite Man and King Shark are the greatest things ever happened on a cartoon oh, ever. King Shark. Dr. Psycho is an a-hole. Yo. Dr. Psycho's... Yo. So, me and Winston A. Marshall, we do, if you check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash J-A-Y Washington 80, Winston A. Marshall and I, we reviewed every single episode. 
And when we got to the episode when they were trying to find a nemesis, and Dr. Psycho was like, I got a nemesis, Wonder Woman. It was like, that's not your nemesis. And you find out why him and Wonder Woman don't. Oh, we just take a picture. You might want to clean your screen. Your screen dirty as hell. Oh, like, man. <laughs> your screen. Wow. Your screen dirty as hell. Wow. It was just all fogged up. Like, what you got, Vaseline on your face? Hey, it was like, bro. you were just like, hey, how you doing? Sandy. All right. <laughs> You gotta go ahead, wipe it off with your shirt or this cool ass jacket you got on, sir. I try, I try. <laughs> Brandon, like, why oh, you gotta be trying to clown me on the podcast? You ain't hey, you me? I don't care. I, I got you. Okay, I got you. Sure. I know it's all love. It's all Damn love. Damn right, all right. Because it's, it's the extra black history Monday. Shout out <laughs> to the more black people that keep walking around. I appreciate y'all. Hell, black people, hell yeah. All right. <laughs> all right, so there really hasn't been a lot of news this week, right? Nothing's happened. Like everybody's quite, oh, let me. I got. I'm sorry. That was it on news. I got to talk about the shows that happened. Uh, I ref, I didn't watch Supergirl because I just didn't watch it, and I refused to watch Batwoman because why would I be putting my soul through that? Uh, <laughs> Ruby Rose is terrible as an actress. Uh, as a lead, she is not a lead. Ruby Rose is a supporting actor, plain and simple. Anytime if you watch Ruby Rose's Batwoman by herself in the lead, it is awful. You put it in the crossovers, it is amazing. You like, oh my god, awesome. this is this is good. As the crossover, she's great. When it comes to her leading the show, you're like, so they just give anybody a job, right? That's the CW. <laughs> I will not disparage the CW because it's a big, I am friends with Mark Guggenheim. I will not disparage the CW, but he knows how I feel about Bad Woman. I will, however, they have, so, and, and Rachel Scars and his Alice, let me tell you something. Y'all just started getting anybody like, we need a random white chick. Don't get on set. Wow. That's how they wow. did Alice. That's how they did Alice. Because they wanted to make the her Batman, her Batwoman and Alice the quote unquote different rivals of Batman and Joker. That's right. exactly what they were trying to do. And unfortunately, it didn't pay off like it was supposed to. Like I said, Batwoman is great when you put it in crossovers. But I'm not gonna keep talking hey, about I'm it. I'm not gonna shake the show. I mean, I, I I pretty much have been watching just the crossovers. I mean, I'll be honest with you. Honest By the way, I like just I like to brag on the crossovers again one more time. I was one of 30 people in the entire world that knew of that crossover with Ezra Miller and Grant Gustin. I was one of 30 people that got to see it thanks to Mark Guggenheim. I, 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 so I didn't tell a lot of people this story. Some people might have heard it. Some people might not have. So I got to watch episode three over Guggenheim's house. He invited me over, and we were there with a bunch of the cast, the crews from all the different shows and everything, right? He had a taco, he had a food truck outside his house. It wasn't even a taco truck. He had a food truck, because Mark Guggenheim has that much money to get a damn food truck outside his house. So I was going out to the food truck, getting food from the food truck, and I came back from a chicken shawarma, because chicken shawarma is delicious, you know what I'm saying? You gotta have chicken shawarma in your life. So I got my chicken shawarma, and I come back upstairs going to the house, and I'm walking in, I see everybody looking at the TV, and I look at the TV, and it's Ezra Miller on the screen. And it just cuts, and it's Ezra Miller and Grant Gustin, and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> So I got to look at everybody else and look at the TV and then look at myself like, Yo, y'all see it? what I'm seeing? Is it really hypnosis in this chicken swarm? Am I really hot right now? And then it played and Guggenheim was like, oh, how did they get in there? And it was like, don't tell nobody nothing. And so Lachelle Sargent is one of my great friends. She's the PR for Black Lightning. I love Lachelle to death. She was like, Jay, don't you tweet about this. I was like, I'm not saying nothing. I'm not going to mess up this moment. I want to be invited back to see things like this. But... So I was one of the 30 people who saw it. So when it happened, me and my boy, who was a writer for Black Lightning, we were texting each other five minutes before the scene was about to happen. We were like, people have no idea what's Listen, about man. to happen. And I tweeted out, y'all need to make sure you watch this episode of Crisis, because I knew what was about to happen. Right. So when it happened, I just retweeted my tweet with, told you so. <laughs> so thank you. I just want to tell that story. Uh, Legends of Tomorrow next to Black Lightning is my favorite show on there. The fact that Azra gave Constantine an accelerated form of lung cancer was the greatest thing ever because I was like, are they finally going to let him smoke? Because if you ever watch Legends, he teases it every time. They never let him light up a cigarette directly. And so they did all that. But I, I liked it. And they brought Genghis, Court, Genghis Khan in. And I was like, these encores are just the greatest thing ever because it's all people through history. And every time I think of Genghis Khan, I think of Genghis Khan from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Oh, yes. Remember yeah. Genghis Khan mm -hmm. going crazy through the mall? Like, y'all got to remember that. Um, find out that Charlie had sex with uh, Bayrod, Zari's brother, who I think is a horrible addition to the show. Let me tell you something. I get you are supposed to add new. The beauty of Legends of Tomorrow is they get to add new cast members and rotate people Freakly, in and out. Yeah. It, there's no rules to it. Right. Because of what it is. It's a hodgepodge. It's a potluck. There's no rules to it. You can throw people together. But that dude is terrible. Like, I thought it was just going to be for the season finale. He showed up for a minute, and they was like, all right, we kill him in the first episode. He's been in the season. Right. Who do I need to talk to to stop this? <laughs> like, I understand the whole season probably been shot and edited, but can y'all edit his ass out? Like, I don't. 
Anyway, uh, the Flash was dope because they brought back Gorilla Grodd, and I love Gorilla Grodd. But the fact they gave Gorilla Grodd Barry speed was the greatest thing ever. To see a gorilla move with lightning, I was like, let me tell you something. God is good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ain't no other time a gorilla going to have lightning and don't nobody shoot at him. Like, you know what I'm saying? He was able right. to just be able to run and fight another gorilla with the light. And then it was Black History Month, so the dark gorilla whooped the white gorilla's ass. Wow, it was you going real deep. I'm just <laughs> real deep. Sorry. People were like, yo, wow. why you say that? What's up? Full of all was a white gorilla. It was a deep one. I'm going to just say this about Black Lightning, okay? I love the fact that Jill Scott is back. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I would have Jill Scott's babies, okay? Jilly from Philly can just rub on my cheeks all she wants. I love her as Lady Eve. She's the greatest Thank thing possible in the show, Thank okay? Uh, but I will say, I, they brought back Lala again. And if you've seen it, you would ask the question I've been asking. Who in the costume department goes to the Lala character and go, hmm, so what pimp are we going to dress Lala like this week? <laughs> Lala been dressed like right. eight different pimps each week he been back on. <laughs> like somebody has music that play in the background. Is, bam, bam, bam. Like literally, I don't, I guess. Also, I still can't stand Geoforce. The dude, that's the dude with the Troy Palomalu hair. Oh, right, right, like right, I can't okay. take a superhero serious whose hair is luxurious. I cannot. <laughs> he don't put it in a ponytail. He don't do nothing, dog. He just had this Brad. luxurious bounce in his hair trying to be mad. So I'm so, I got to kill Dr. J. It's like, no, you got to kill flakes is what you got to kill. You got to stop split ends. You don't have to save the world. Just let your soul glow. Just let it shine through. Uh, what else? Uh, how do you feel about Wayne Brady being grave digger? Uh, I mean, I'll be honest with you with with that character, I, I don't know a whole bunch about Grave, Grave Digger. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in terms of what he's brought to it, I know people that are more familiar with it. They probably have deeper feelings about yeah. it. I'm okay with it. Let me tell you I, something. Don't, I don't know. To see so Wayne Brady, I don't, I don't know much of the character myself either. I haven't had a chance to do research because I got other things to do. Sure. Uh, but to see Wayne Brady as a bad guy yeah. is dope. Yeah. But I need him to say, is Grave Digger going to have to choke him? He's going to have to say that. He gonna have to say that. I, I just want somebody just to look at him like you look like Wayne Brady. <laughs> it's just for him to make a face. What I really want, I wrote, I tweeted this because it was the greatest thing I could think of at the moment because I was high off of a uh, life. And so I tweeted, exterior, Freeland streets, night. The Markovian army army has laid siege to Freeland. Metahumans are just destroying everything around. There's fire and explosions. C citizens are running left and right. Gravedigger appears from the shadows to survey the damage. He smiles with a look of approval as he is happy with what has happened. And he locks eyes with a random male citizen and goes, Oh shit, it's Wayne Brady, son! That's all I want. That's all I want to happen in that. There's too much that. First of all, I just want y'all to know that breakdown I broke down from a scene, you can see it in your head. I got a future in writing scripts, okay? I got a future in writing scripts. Uh, so, yeah, so you like it, right? Yeah, so far so good. All right, so normally this is the part of the show where I go to the Mad Titan emails, Mad Titan cast, Mad Titan podcast at gmail.com, or the calls you can leave to the Mad Titan hotline, which is 818 276 6947. 818 Two seven six six nine four seven. One of my callers who calls all the time, his ass is here, and I'm glad he's here. Okay, so what I want to do is, if you got any questions for me, you want to say something, you want to show some love, come up to this mic right here, and I'll take these to the end of the show. So anybody want to come up? Matter of fact, Chauncey, come here for a minute. I want to go Y'all give Chauncey a round of applause. Woo! -hoo! Reason I brought Chauncey. So Chauncey's been a big fan, a big supporter, and a friend, and calls the podcast all the time, calls the hotline a lot, right? Here's the problem. Chauncey calls the hotline with the sexiest voice ever, and he's calling me, okay? He calls, he's like, hey, what's up, Jay? This is Chauncey from Chicago, man. So like, brother, listen, man. listen, I got a question in my ass. So, you know. <laughs> See what I'm saying? He's like, so I got a question in my ass. So, in this episode of Black Lightning, you know what I mean? With the snack, though. With the snack, though. This episode of Black Lightning, you know what I mean? No, I'm smack, man. You know what I'm saying? Listen, this episode of Black Lightning. They got a miss out of her, right? And she be acting like she's somebody special. And I'm sitting there listening like, I shouldn't rub my nipples while this nigga's talking. Like, it's just, it's sensuous. Like, why is he talking to me? Getting me moist, and I'm a man. I shouldn't be moist. Ooh, never moist. So moist. Hey, I know, right? Ever. Ever. In life. Like, I shouldn't feel this way. And then, 
But he always, but I love, I love Johnny for the support he got. So I want to bring you. You got a question this week, man, or something you want to ask me since I'm here? All right, bro. No Please. pressure. Go ahead. All right. All right. <laughs> hey, wait. First of all, before you talk, voice, right? Man. I want y'all to no listen pressure. to this voice. Listen attentively. All right. First off, it's great to see you back here, brother, in Chicago. Thank you. I've, you know, been friends for a good minute. Yes, indeed. And it wouldn't be the same without you. Yeah. Appreciate so you, bro. Awesome. Appreciate you. Uh, secondly, since it is in the end of Black History Month, even though Black History is 24-7-365, I'm going to say <laughs> we're Wakanda forever. We're forever. Hey, man, no, y'all, by the way, don't quit doing that. Quit Wakanda forever and Chadwick Boseman before he shoot one of y'all in the face. Yeah. That man I, is I, tired. I, I, that man is tired of Wakanda forever. I understand. You, you can see it. You can see it. You can see it in that yeah. man's eye. His soul is right. gone. He was at the All Star Game post to enjoy they dribbling, like, and they like put your arms across each other. And he Everybody was like, "I hate you." <laughs> Just like, I hope you die of a painful death. You can see it in Chadwick Boseman's face. He want to punch anybody and walk up and be like, "What kind of?" I challenge you. I challenge you. Look at him every single time. And if Chadwick Boseman slaps the piss out you, you deserve it. But go ahead. I'm sorry. No, that's good. So. If you had that EP power, executive producer power, what have you, if you had a choice to either do a remake of Meteor Man or Ooh. a reboot of the Man's TV series from the 90s, which one would you do and who would be <laughs> ah! the perfect person you cast? Damn. Uh, if I had the power to reboot either Media Man or bring back Mantis from the 90s, which, by the way, everybody knows I'm a diehard fan of Carl Lumbly, so, like, you know, just to see Carl... Especially when he played Myron in, in Supergirl. I know, right? John, I feel you. Gave <laughs> him the triple daddy voice. I'm sorry. I'm a father. I fell. <laughs> okay, I would reboot. <laughs> I would reboot Meteor Man okay. for one reason and one reason alone. I'm bringing back Don Cheadle as Goldilocks. Yo. If nobody Yo. else, and I want to hear somebody yell out, Go to Lords! <laughs> Junior Lords! <laughs> Baby Lords! <laughs> I want me. I'm bringing back Meteor Man. Now, I'm an executive. I can do whatever I want. I'm bringing back Mantis as well. Carl Lumbly is going to play somebody's old daddy again. He's going to be like, mm-hmm. Son, my legs <laughs> have failed me. <laughs> Who's going to play his son? Uh, Yolano from uh, Insecure. Yolano from Insecure. The brother from the first Purge that all of a sudden knew martial arts and he was a gang member. Man. Why did he nobody? You ever seen the first Purge? You saw the first Purge, right? Yes. Remember the black dude, D, that was running the gang? Right, right, right. All of a sudden, this Negro yeah. know martial arts? How was you fighting trained soldiers? Wesley you was a Snipes thug. <laughs> no, when we know Wesley Snipes, he trains judo and slaps people, unfortunately. But listen, you are a black dude that deals drugs to the community. You know what I'm saying? Like your name is Chocolate Gitty. Yeah. Uh, black Dynamite reference. <laughs> but... I didn't know that anyway, but that's who I would have playing. Okay. Yolanda would be in, and Carl Lumley would be in there somewhere with the old mantis suit just in the closet hanging up, right. and with a sign that says "These don't work by the legs." Like that would. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, y'all together, bro. Uh, one more thing, side note. How about throwing Mario Howard for me, man, so he can like be an extra version of Ghost? Oh my God, <laughs> yes, he would be. He would be the head dude. He would be the head Golden right. Lord. Right, 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 right. Yes, yeah, he would. Omari Howard would be the head Golden. Like, listen. To every lady who's still trying to do, trying to figure out who shot Ghost, and then when you found out you was upset, let him get shot in the your man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> let him get shot in the Terrence Howard. Get Terrence Howard. Hey, man. Hey, man. Yeah. Hey, man. Get it's this dude. Hey, man. It's this dude, man. He touched me, man. <laughs> What's his name? Yo, Media, man. Put him in there. Hey, Media, man. Hey, <laughs> Media, man. He be like, no, my name's Media, man. That's why I said Media, <laughs> man. <laughs> Media, man. I appreciate you, man. Anybody else before I get done wrap this up? Come on up to the microphone. Tell everybody your name and all the hey. good stuff. Hey, uh, my name's Ari. Is it okay if I do my question in a uh, uh, Howard Ratner voice? Okay. Okay. I'm Uncut Gems. So my question here for you is, um, what did you think of the Invisible Man? And um, I want to know. I personally thought it was the best horror film I've seen this year so far and you know it's um I think Elizabeth Moss deserves an Oscar nomination and it's the best the and it's the best um sound edit sound mixing and I'm not doing this accent sound sound mixing and editing I've ever seen in a movie maybe everyone knows you've seen it yet 
<laughs> My accent, it doesn't work when I'm in. <laughs> First of all, I have not seen Meteor, I, Meteor Man. Oh, am I still on Meteor Man? I have not seen the Invisible Man yet. I haven't had a chance. It just came out. I've been here yeah, all weekend. Yeah. So when I get back to Los Angeles, I will check it out. Uh, Elizabeth Moss is just weird to me sometimes. Because, yeah, like, I, I still, it's just weird I sometimes when you see Elizabeth Moss. You're like, uh, okay, yeah. I guess. But I will go see it. <laughs> yeah. uh, the fact that there's a dude, which he said, is somebody sitting in a chair. Y'all like, who? And it's literally clearly two ass lumps in the chair. Uh, and don't nobody <laughs> knows the ass lumps. <laughs> We don't know nothing. This dude ass love and presence. I'll be like, ah! Kick did, him in the did face. Did you know the guy, the cop in the movie, that actor, he was in uh, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas? That is too much detail for me to even know, but uh, anything else? Um, I wanted to know, do you think that Defy Blood, Spike movie, will have a better chance at winning Oscars than Black Klansman did? Well, as somebody who would never get nominated for an Oscar for Chirac, um, <laughs> yeah. Ugh. this brings back painful memories. Uh... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It depends on when it comes out. Yeah. The problem is, movies are made. We talk about this a lot on Movie Talk when before we got fired. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we lost our jobs. <laughs> we lost our jobs because I got to get ready to go. Um, <laughs> it depends. There are movies that are made specifically as Oscar bait that are released around the time of the Oscars because those are the ones that stay fresh in voters' minds. So it depends on when he drops it. That's the, that's the only thing that's going to play I mean, it's a Giancarlo Esposito Spike Lee reunion. I like, understand you, you, that, but you like the whole yes, I would love to see Dean Big Brother Almighty, which, by the way, if you've never seen School Days, please watch it, because Tisha Gamble licks apart this dude's head. But thank you. Yeah, I got to get ready to get about it here. Appreciate you, Ari, so much. I, and you, you gave, that was you that tweeted me? Yeah. Yes, I'm cool with it. Okay, here you go. Okay, thank you. I got a big-ass post of us. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> Thank you, everybody. That wraps up this episode of the live edition of the Mad Titan Podcast here from the Chuck Loader Comics Group, SC2E2 in Chicago, man. Please, everybody, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Mr. J Washington. That's M R J A Y. You should know how to spell Washington. You really should. I swear to God. Uh, my Patreon, patreon.com slash Mr. J Washington. This is the Super Villain Squad. Come jump down with your boy. A lot of interviews I did from here at C2E2 and exclusive information and all that stuff will happen only to members of the squad. And speaking of which, I want to thank all the members of my squad. Here we go. Adelia Chamberlain, the King J. Brown, AZ well, Badfish, Brandon Boston. Buckingham, California <laughs> Joe Cossie, Dutch Lobe, David Adams, DJ Snacks, Fat Boy Cantina, Frank, Frank Castillo, Drake Morrissey, Hank Staley, James Smart, Jeffrey Chadorn, Jim Mason, John Mariano, LK, Marcus Kennedy, Marcus Burton, Mikey Lito, Paisley Darts, Randy Costas, Rudy Rueda, Samir Tazvai, Steve Tozen, and a prince that wasn't promised. Thank you all for being a part of the squad. I need a water. Uh, but also, make sure you are checking out Blurts in the Hood with myself and Winston A. Marshall. We do Blurts in the Hood every week around Wednesday it drops, as well as our show Blurt and Gold. I have the new episode of Blurt and Gold. It's in my computer right now. I haven't edited the new episode of Blurt and Gold because I've been here. So guess what? It will be dropping. But please go to the Facebook page, Blurts in the Hood, and like us on the YouTube channel, Blurt in the Hood. Duh with the A, man. Ooh. That wraps it up. Thank you so much, Brandon. Go ahead, go ahead, yeah, plug yeah, your yeah. stuff. Plug, plug, plug. So, uh, uh, Facebook, Movers and Shakers Unlimited, Twitter, Move and Shake, UNLTD. Uh, Move and Shakers Unlimited on Instagram, and you can find me at Brandon Troy ENT. So, there you go. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you for coming to hang out with me. Absolutely. Thank you for everybody who hung out here live watching the podcast, man. Thank you to everybody listening at home. I will holler at you all next week. Till then, take care. Thank you to Chuck Load of Comics, man. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you so much. I appreciate you for this opportunity. Any chance I can do this, I'm here for you, bro. Thank you to everybody so much. Holla at y'all later. I'm out. Bye. Yeah.